Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Sunday chat today is not going to have a spotlight, but there's a rare treat at the end. We have some new orchids. Yeah, <laughs> one of them I actually bought. <laughs> Anyway, yesterday's um, Orchid Society meeting was um, controlled chaos, I think I'd call it. You have to bear in mind our meetings are usually somewhere between 20 and 25 people. Um, occasionally a few more, which is only about half our membership, but there's an awful lot don't come to all the meetings. And um, anyway, because of all the new members we got at the show, we didn't expect them all to turn up, but it turned out about 12 of them did. That's half as many again on top of what we normally have. The noise level was incredible. It was starting to like get cringing. It was, everything was just so loud. Well, that's how I felt anyway, but I'm used to quiet, obviously. Um, but yeah, it was a busy time. Um, <laughs> Quite a few people let us know they were coming so that we could get make sure we had enough homemade cake. Um, you know, because if the cake runs out before I get my bit, I mean, that's, that's a hanging offence, basically, around the back and up in the tree. We don't let Roger not have his cake. Um, but yeah, uh, I think it was okay. Um, it's th how things pan out are not always how you would plan them if you had the chance. Our programme of... Um, you know, speakers and things at the um, meetings for the year are planned out in advance prior to the start of the year. So this meeting had a talk, Peter White gave us a talk, a presentation on Sarcochylus. Um, when a load of new members arrive that have never been to this sort of thing before, and most of them are would be classed as amateur growers or you know, a few orchids in the home type of growers. That was not the best talk for, for their first one. It was more for um, more experienced people, shall we say. Um, anyway, Australian orchids, um, the main nursery out there, Kulnara, I think it's called. Um, the presentation was produced by uh, the guy at that nursery and Peter White had the presentation as a PowerPoint thing, so he talked along with it, if you see what I mean. Um, some gorgeous blooms, and the hybridisation that's been going on is absolutely stunning. It's another one of those plants, there aren't many, there, there really aren't that many in the wild, so you're starting off with very few. That's all you've got to work with. And the colours and combinations that have um, been produced is absolutely stunning. Um, unfortunately, in Australia, nothing gets out and nothing gets in in the plant world. That's how they are. And they've remained incredibly safe as a consequence. We don't knock that sort of thing. So the only way to get the orchids out is in the flask. Um, and that has been done. Um, a Kerns in, um, in the EU, they got, a, got some flasks in and deflasked them, grew them on as seedlings. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that Sarcochylus can, out of the flask, they can be got to flower in a couple of years, so they, they can develop incredibly quickly. So, you know, if you ever saw, you know, some sort of seedlings for sale, don't sort of cast them aside on the whole, oh, there'll be years before they bloom, because they might not, yeah? I mean, in our environment, possibly three years, but... Um, Certainly not the five or six years for some of the Cattleyas, and some go up to ten years, you know, some of the paths can take absolutely ages to get their first bloom out. Um, yes, so uh, it was a good talk. Um, I think everybody sort of enjoyed themselves, although I think it was a bit of a culture shock for some of the new people. <laughs> uh, I remember the first one I ever went to, um, which would have been the Bournemouth Orchid Society, um, I was lucky because the first time my contact with them wasn't a meeting, it was a coach trip. I saw it on their website, you know, coach trip to Burnham's Orchid Nursery, £20. Non-members welcome. I thought, we'll have some of that. 20 quid to Burnham's and back. <laughs> uh, 
I wouldn't even get to the garage to get to the fuel and back for that. Um, so that's how I first, and of course at, at a, an open sort of event like that, you, you get to talk to people, you have lunch with people, it's a very casual thing. So that's how I met and made some friends with some of the Bournemouth people and then decided to join and went along to my first meeting. That was a bit nerve wracking, you know, even for somebody like me who doesn't really give a monkey's about much, quite honestly. I don't get phased by events and people. We're all the same. I remember going to a wedding once with um, some people I went to school with and it was posh. It was in a really posh hotel, in a really sort of classy joint as they say. And um, as we walked in one of my friends said, this, this place isn't for people like us, it's for people like them, you know, all the people in the posh frocks and stuff. And I said, we're all people, we're all the same. There are no better, worse, bad, there's bad and good, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> we've got as much right to be here as they have. We were invited. <laughs> but yeah, some people get phased by that sort of thing, but uh, not me. I treat everybody the same and everybody gets treated with the same contempt. <laughs> right, um, so anyway, the meeting went, um, went well. Uh, numbers greatly increased. Um, which improves the income, like from my point of view as treasurer, I'm always watching. Our meetings always run at a loss as such, you know, we've got to pay for the hall, we've got to pay for the speaker. I mean, Peter White, all he wanted was expenses. He wouldn't take anything. So we didn't pay much for him, but you know, the hall and the speaker are expenses and our income is merely from the raffle and the catering, um, you know. Oh, and while we were there yesterday, we had two more new members turned up. Um, Neighbours of existing members who got persuaded to come. So we, we even got two new members yesterday as well. So uh, anyway, so that was the meeting. Um, there's not much else, as I said, there's not much going on in here as such. Um, I need to get the hot box going again. I have noticed a few scale lurking. Very, very minute quantities, just an odd one or two. But it's the time of year for them to get going, you know, along with the plants, maybe, one day. Um, but yeah, so I need to start using the hot box again. The reason it hasn't been used is a temperature issue. Um, I need my daytime temperatures, preferably higher than the nighttime temperatures. Well, when it's really cold outside, if the heater didn't come on, this place the temperature would drop right down and the hot box needs still air for it to work properly. So for the hot box to be on, I need to shut the heater and the circulating fan down to guarantee it doesn't come on. Well, when, it, when the weather's cold, this place would chill, which I'm not prepared to do. So now we've got the longer days and the better temperatures, I can start using it again. And the first time I use it, it'll get left on a very, very long time. Um, probably five, maybe even six hours. Um, and uh, during that time, I need the temperature to stay reasonable. Uh, you know, as long as it stays 18 degrees or above, I'll be happy. And then that can sort of do its work. And then we can get back to perhaps um, using it once a week again, something like that. Because it certainly does the job, you know, I mean, this, this place had a lot of scale, you know, at one point, and now you've got a job to find any. I can find a few because I know where to look. <laughs> it's, always the, it's always the same plants, quite honestly. It's probably where there's some eggs or something lurking that just lie dormant for a while and come back again at a later time. So that's that. Um, Videos for the other channel, I've been doing a few lately, I've been bringing a few, the, the old dormant channel that's just been left to sort of rot in the uh, <laughs> background, um, I've been bringing some of those videos forward because for new people on that gardening channel they won't have seen those, you know the gardening and bonsai, the combined channel, so I've been bringing forward some of those so that uh, it's, I still need to film a bit like front and back and put a bit in the middle of an old one or something so still a bit of work but not as much. I haven't done a bonsai video for a while but there will be one. I know it's my day off tomorrow normally from YouTube but I may well do a bonsai video 
as I'm not watering out here tomorrow, so there'll be won't be a workload to worry about. Um, and one of my bonsai actually blew over in the storm and fell out of its pot. It's in a training pot, a little plastic pot, which has no weight. And for some crazy reason, when I put it in that pot, I didn't wire it in. So it blew over and fell out of the pot. So that, that needs fixing properly, and I'll probably put it in a proper bonsai pot this time as well. A bit bigger as well, so that there's room for the roots. The roots seem pretty good, actually. And because it was a storm and it was raining, you know, it's not like it burnt in the sun or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, you know, we might do a bonsai video tomorrow or maybe Tuesday. As far as out here is concerned, um, the orchids and the orchid channel, the channel is progressing. I'm very pleased with the fact it's now progressing. Um, there are certain stats that moved from where they were to where they are now as a result of the changes I've done, you know, with the better um, thumbnails, um, brighter, more precise and shorter titles, all those sorts of things that I did to try and get this channel to move a bit better. They've worked and those stats are being maintained, so they're not dropping back. So I'm pleased with that, very pleased. And while we're on that, of course, a thanks to everybody who supports this channel in whatever way you see fit. Um, which includes watching the ads. If the ads don't get watched, then nobody gets paid. <laughs> and obviously there is an income related to this particular channel that helps keep this place going. Pays for things like some new orchids and stuff like that. Now my phone's just bleeped, that's important because that will be from Lynn. Those of you who don't know Lynn, she's a good friend and chairman of the Orchid Society that um, I go to, joint chair nowadays. And um, one of the orchids I've got is from her, Kiki's, and um, she texted me the name so that, I, so that I'd have it for today and I could put it in my notes. And I promptly deleted it yesterday evening. I was tired. So I just sent her a message because she's off on holiday today. Um, can you send me the name again? So hopefully, providing she had it with her or could remember it, then that will be the name of the, uh, the, the missing, missing name of the Kikis in a minute. Anyway, again, thanks for the support for the channel. We've got watching the videos, obviously, leaving comments, doing the thumbs up and subscribing. That's all the normal stuff. That's the stuff that anybody can do, basically. But then on the financial support side, you know, we've got the people who've become patrons to the channel. Thanks a bunch for that. That's a like a monthly donation. There's also the um, YouTube membership, which some people have um, taken up. Um, that's not as efficient as being a patron because the um, patron site, when they make their payouts, they take about 12% as, as their commission, their sort of fee for doing it all and setting up the platform. YouTube take 31%. It's a bit greedy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so more would come to me if you were a patron than if you were a member, so to speak. Um, just as a matter of a side. And then there's always the buy me a coffee thing, which I always say is, is like leaving a tip. You go to a restaurant and have a nice meal, you think the service has been great and everything, you leave a tip, don't you? Well, that's what the buy me a coffee, that's, that's how I see that working. That's for a particular video that was good for you, helped you out perhaps growing some types of orchids that you grow that you were having trouble with, or one that you just particularly liked, something like that. The buy me a coffee there is there for that. Um, it's, it's, it's like a one-off, leave a tip for something that, you know, meant something to you, that's for that. And that's all good stuff. And um, yes, the combined Bonsai and Garden channel, that's monetized as well. And um, recently that seems to have taken off a little bit better, probably because I'm posting some videos now. Winter is not a good time for Bonsai and Gardens. <laughs> so that's getting busier. As, as the time progresses. For those of you on the Orchid channel who don't know about that, it's called Rogers Garden and Bonsai, and well, it does what it says on the tin. So that's that. Um, stuff going on out here. 
Um, I'm looking at starting to move these shelves around soon. Um, I might even start doing that tomorrow. I know it's supposed to be my day off. When I say day off, I really mean a day off from YouTube. Just get away from sticking my face in front of that thing and all that sort of stuff. So I might actually start the move. Um, Hannah was down last weekend. We nearly started it. We looked at it and everything. And I said, yeah, the trouble is, the first thing that needs to move, all the electrics have got to be redone. <laughs> we just thought, nah. <laughs> weekend let's have some time just some relaxing time so we didn't start it we didn't get it done but yeah obviously I've got electrics all over the place and they um, they are associated with these areas here so uh, yeah so that's got to do now I've got to do something in a minute that I've forgotten somebody bought in a Symbidium onto the show benches that not show benches display and competition benches at the meeting yesterday and I'm sorry I couldn't film. There were some smashing plants there yesterday and quite a lot of them. I couldn't get near the flipping things with the camera because the way it is, it goes down one side of the hall and then there's a sm relatively small gap followed by rows of chairs for people to sit and look at the front of the hall for the talk and whoever's spouting off at the front. And that's a relatively narrow space and with so many people there, I couldn't get in there, not in any way to film, so I couldn't film anything, and it's a pity, there were some smashers. But somebody had a Symbidium that they, it was bought as a no ID, that they think is Tiger Tail, which obviously is one that I've got. And I said, well, I can't picture my bloom accurately enough to make a positive ID on a plant when I haven't got it under my nose. So when I get home, I'll take a still of mine and email it to you and then you can compare the two and decide whether yours is tiger tail or not. Uh, yeah, give the work to somebody else for a change so I've still got that to do. Did everything else this morning, I've done all the books, done all the accounts, sorted the banking out, ready to go off to the bank tomorrow probably, a little ride out in the car. Um, yeah, so got all my you know, stuff straight as treasurer. I haven't got to do anything else now for another month for the next meeting. That's good. Got all that out of the way. And things going on out here, apart from moving the shelves around and keeping up with watering and feeding, really not much. It's just hoping that things that aren't growing come back into growth or just die. Just get on with it. Just sitting there, you know, taking up space. And me wondering whether you're going to get going or not. If you're going to die, get on and die. I was fed up with sort of waiting for some plants. And I might just do a bull by the horns soon because I'm getting fed up with quite a few. for not They're just not doing anything. And they do take up space, you know. So uh, we might be um, having a purge. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, so there's that going on. So um, I think we'll get on and have a look at the new plants now. Um, Oh, there is coffee in here today, by the way. I did explain in a video that there are times when I'm holding this and there's no coffee in it. And it's just to stop me wringing my hands, which is a, well, it's a habit. I was, it's supposed to be a nervous habit, but I'm not a nervousy person. But it's a habit I don't like. I don't like watching it. I'm sure others don't. That's what that's for. At the moment, it's actually to wake me up a bit, the coffee. Right, we will have a look at this one first. This is Dendrobium jenkinsii. And those of you who have been around a while, I can hear you saying, but you've already got one of them. Yeah, and it's one of them that won't grow, has done nothing for over a year. And I don't think it's going to. Lynn's got a big one, and she said, I got this small one as a backup and it won't grow. She said, I left it on its little tiny piece of bark and put it on a bigger piece so that it never has to be disturbed. And she said, it's not doing anything for me, so you have a go and see if you can get it to grow. <laughs> so, so you could say, I've now got two that won't grow. This one is in a much better state than mine, even though it's tiny. This, the, this is a growing on seedling. If you look at it here, these tiny little um, canes here, have progressed up to the place where the canes have got some leaves. So that's a seedling pushing on. 
and it's pushed out in this direction too. And these leaves are good. This plant is alive and capable of growing on. Mine, not so much. So that's like a, an additional, you know, another one. Um, but I will have to keep up with this, um, with the watering, because these are that, that is actually bare rooted, there's no moss. So um, we have to keep up with that. I'll at least have to have a spray every day at that time of year. Um, that might be, I can't imagine Lynn waters that every day. <laughs> Not the amount of plants she's got in two separate greenhouses and one of those has got two or three sections. Uh, a lot more plants than I've got. I can't imagine they get watered every day. But that needs watering every day. While we're on that subject, um, get my coffee out of the way. You probably didn't think you'd ever see this again. Ugh. Because I swore blind I would never use it again. Because it was getting my plants wet. And when I first moved in here, the humidity was high, I was even using a humidifier, a hydrofogger, and with the lower temperatures I was getting rot, so I swore I'd never use a sprayer again. But yesterday my plants needed some water and I was out all day. I'm busy today, I'm not watering today, so I got the sprayer out and I just put some RO water in there and I went round and sprayed most of the things in here but I didn't get any plants wet. I was very careful to spray around the edges of the pot and not get that central point of the plant actually wet because that, well, well, that's what could do the damage. Yesterday was a particularly warm day actually, you know, outside, so it would have been warm in here as well. So I wasn't here most of the day. Anyway, that's why that's out again. I'm not going to get into a habit of using that. I want to water my plants properly, which includes picking them up and having a look at them. This is a lazy way of watering, and it's a good way of plants going downhill and you not noticing, because you're looking at what you're doing, not the plant. Yeah, You're looking at where that water's going. Is it going in the pot? Is it going all over your electrics, etc.? So you tend to be looking at the end of the sprayer and where, where the water's going. You're not necessarily looking at the leaves on your plant and, you know, looking at the plant. So I won't be using it much, but in emergencies, I've always said some water is better than no water. So that's what that was for. Right, let me go and get my phone. I won't shut down. It could be a text about nothing to do with this, but if it's a text from Lynn, yes it is, good. So we will now find out what these kikis are called. And it is, that's a mouthful, it's Dendrobium Shantaboom Sunrise. That's S-C-H-A-N-T-A-B-O-O-N. Chantaboom or Chantaboom, depending if it's Frenchish, Frenchish or not, Sunrise. So that's what my Kikis are. And they are still bagged up and wrapped in tissue because they were bare rooted. They're nice Kikis, they've got good leaves. Um, they are typical of, well, one of them is typical of a Kiki that was growing out the side of a cane. So it You've got your cane like that, and the kiki starts growing out, and then it does that. So when you take it off, you've got a plant that does that. <laughs> I've got one of them, but there's more than one in here. Uh, in fact, there's three. So there's a nice little kiki there with good roots. Yeah, so that will plant up nicely. And then we've got another one there with the um, proverbial bend in it. Again, nice roots. These roots are nice and green. They weren't when I got home yesterday because they were wrapped in tissue, but the tissue was dry. So I actually wetted the tissue. So they've been in a wet tissue overnight. So they've hydrated nicely. And then the final one 
is the one with the <laughs> growing upside down shape thing. Uh, you might be able to straighten that up with a cane a little bit at a time. Yeah, just strap it to a cane like that and then a week later move it on a bit. Might be able to straighten it up. But again, it's got good roots. And all of these kikis have roots with growing tips, so they're active roots. So they should plant up okay without a shock. Now that dendrobium I've never heard of. I don't know what sort of dendrobium it is. It could be a nobly type, it might be nothing to do with that. It's a hybrid obviously. So, you know, I'll look that up, find out what type of dendrobium it is and think about where these are going to go. But they're nice kikis anyway. So those are they. So those are the two gifted from Lynn. So I'm just going to wrap those back up again because I probably won't pop them today. They'll probably get done tomorrow. And then they came in a little polybin bag to keep them damp, which is good. And putting them in there like that helps the leaves stay hydrated as well. So that's that. And then we've got the one that I bought. And this was Peter White has some plants on his table. Now this looks to me like a large plant that was divided up into the pieces that had spikes on. So I'm relatively confident it's a division. The reason why I'm reasonably confident it's a division is that this bulb here has bloomed. This has got a spike on it leaving one bulb with no spike or no bloom. Orchids don't grow like that. So this has come off of something else um, to have got two bulbs that have spiked or are in spike. Now this has got a damaged spike and possibly a damaged bloom. I think that bloom, bloom's broken. He had a problem in transport. Um, I looked at the plants. There was a plant with a lovely spike with two blooms that were opening. So that, that bit of the plant was really nice. This bit of the plant wasn't. So I've chosen the one that had the nicest looking plant with the best green leaves. Quite a few of the leaves were yellowing where they've been getting a bit, a bit too much light, I think. And um, I look along the lines that we, we'll get one or two blooms on here so that we get to see what it's like. The blooms will come again another time. Pick a bad plant and you might lose it. So I went for the better plant. Now I don't know whether this has got roots or not and this is, well it's actually got a label on it. <laughs> it's in Cyclia Shinfong Thomas. So that's the name of it. You could probably look it up. But um, yeah, I, I, there was a, a little card, info card, with a picture of what the blooms look like, but one of them had slightly open blue. Why does that bloke have to shout? He's in his own house, and I can hear him clearly in my house. <sighs> Noisy. It just annoys me when you've got neighbours like that. No consideration for anybody else. And the yappy dog as well. Yeah, wonderful. Anyway, so those are the three plants I've got. Two were gifts from Lynn and one I bought. That's the first orchid I bought for some considerable time. So I've got some notes to update, obviously. Um, you know, new plants coming in. Um, two new plants and an additional plant. So that's easy. Copy the line, repeat. <laughs> and just update the dates. <laughs> but, you know, I'm reasonably confident my Jenkins CI is just not going to grow. It's one of those that... It, it's been given enough opportunities and has not done anything. So I think we might just let it go. Um, to say I've got this rescue over area over here has probably got four, maybe five plants in there that are not going to grow. I'm, I'm confident they're just sitting there. They've been sat there doing nothing with no greenery for too long, if you see what I mean. They're shriveled, there's no sign of life from the base, no root activity. 
I think they've just keeled over. So, so be it. That's life, I'm afraid. Moving house, changing environments. That's how it goes. And I've heard from enough people that I'm not the only one. So, uh, anyway. Um, one sad bit is my um, lovely Christata. The blooms are going. Um, and I'm surprised they're keeling over that quickly. But they are. They're, they're, that spike's going to be gone soon. Which means that Christata then comes onto the list of um, going in another pot. I nearly said repotting, but we won't be repotting that. We will, we will be lifting it out of that pot as carefully as we can and just putting it into a slightly bigger pot at a slightly bigger angle and disturbing the roots zero, if I possibly can do that. <laughs> we shall see. So anyway, that's that. Um, I will show you, I filmed this as a new uh, uh, first time bloomer a while back, but the bloom wasn't properly open. So we'll just end having a look at that because it is properly open now. And it's another, um, another one of these um, upside down plants, Gerechia Black Comet. And we now have a fully open bloom. So that's what they look like upside down orchids, these types, um, endearingly known as prosthetias, gerechias, uh, and various other things. <laughs> Even some encyclias have been renamed in around this arena. Anyway, that's that one and it is now fully open. So uh, lovely deep colour nice shape and everything quite a few more buds to come as well so uh, that's looking good and um oh, that'll do for today we do have um slight backache that we're gonna have to put up with today it's only slight but the orchid society meetings i do things that i shouldn't really do because it would be rude not to Things like moving some tables around, things like stacking some chairs up at the end and helping to clear up and tidy up and all that sort of stuff, um, which I shouldn't, you know, there's others that could be doing that. But uh, And it's also loading up the car, unloading at the other end, loading back a car, unloading it at this end. It's all that leaning in the car, you know, with stuff. None of it's particularly heavy. It's the action, the movement, that um, can cause the problem. So, uh, anyway, that'll do for today. So thanks for everybody who uh, enjoys this chatty video on a Sunday. The only one that doesn't follow the new design of the channel. This one maintains the old look, the old style, which is a, the old introduction and ending. Um, maintained purely for this one by request of enough people that it was worth doing. Um, and I don't mind on the grounds that this one gets high views. My Sunday chat gets high views, whatever style it is. So leaving it in the old format doesn't matter to me, whereas the other videos do, because obviously I'm trying to grow the channel, which seems to be working. We seem to be doing okay. And the other one as well, the um, the Rogers Garden and Bonsai channel is growing. Uh, obviously it's a long way behind this one, but any movement upwards is good movement at the end of the day. Channels that remain static or, you know, lots of people unsubscribing and the numbers are going down, YouTube will just forget you. You know, they, YouTube likes to see growth. It likes to see people coming to your channel and preferably staying and hanging around and coming back. That, that's what YouTube likes. So again, a reminder, if you're not subscribed, it'd be nice if you did so. It doesn't cost anything. It's a bad choice of word, that, because it involves, you know, subscribing involves a subscription or implies, and people start thinking, well, I'm not paying. You don't have to. It's just a it's tick box, basically. Um, but it helps YouTube see the channel grow, as does the thumbs up, as do the comments. So those are the three things that cost nothing that can help the channel grow. 
and it is doing so, so I'm well pleased. So thanks to everybody who's done anything to help this channel grow. Thanks a bunch. We do the thank yous on Sunday. Some people do it in every single video. I do it on Sunday while we're chatting, yeah? <laughs> so you don't get it rammed down your throat in every single video like some people do. Um, anyway, once a week, not bad, is it? See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.